Good day, grade 12. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. In this lesson, we're going to be going through um, basically your APs, your arithmetic series, geometric series, and geometric series um, questions. Um, your arithmetic, ge um, geometrics, and your quadratic sequences. So that's what we're going to be going through in this lesson, all the types of exam questions you could possibly get. So let's start with the first question. And like I've told you before, what I've done is I've gone through the old exam papers that I have that are all set by the government or IB papers. And I have basically used those as examples of typical type of exam paper questions. So let's go through it. It says write down the nth term of the sequence. OK, so let's have a look at it. Our first term, term one, is 1 over 4. Our second term is 2 over 9. Our third term is 3 over 16. And our fourth term is 4 over 25. So I don't know if you can see a pattern yet. So let me write it out like this. Term 1 is 1 over 4. Term 2 is 2 over 9. Term 3 is 3 over 16. Term 4 is 4 over 25. So do you see that the numerator, it's pretty obvious that the numerator is the same as the term number. So this is term 1, that's 1. Term 2, 2. Term 3, 3. Term 4, 4. So when we're doing Tn, we know that the numerator is going to be n. OK, now we just need to work out what could possibly be the denominator. What could possibly be the denominator? So let's have a look at these. It's 4, 9, 16 and 25. But if you look at it, you could probably realize that these are perfect squares. 4 is 2 squared. 9 is 3 squared. 16 is 4 squared. And 25 is 5 squared. OK, so now we need to look at how we could possibly relate the first term to 2 squared. So we need to relate T1 basically to 2 squared, T2 to 3 squared, T4 to 4 squared, sorry, T3, and T4 to 5 squared. And do you realize that what is happening is that this number is one more than the term number. 2 is 1 plus 1. 3 is 2 plus 1. 4 is 3 plus 1. 5 is 4 plus 1. Therefore, sorry, this isn't equals, they re how they're relating to each other, right? So therefore, the denominator would be n plus 1 squared. OK, so let's think about it. If that was the case, then the fifth term would be T5 over 6 squared, which would be 36. OK, so that's how you break these down and try and see a pattern. It's not usually a huge amount of marks this type of question because a lot of times it's either you see the pattern or you don't, but a lot of students don't see it. But if you just break it down and you go, OK, what can I do about the numerator? What can I do about the denominator? Oh, look, I can see a pattern. OK, there we go. Let's try the next question. It says we've been given the arithmetic series 2018-16. So they tell you it's an arithmetic series, which means we've got a common difference. Okay, it says determine the hundredth term. So this is actually not such a complicated question for us, not as complicated as far as I'm concerned as the previous question. Okay, because for an arithmetic series, the term Tn is equal to a plus n minus 1d. OK, the A in this case is 20. That is my first term. The D is the common difference. And this is term one, term two and term three. And the common difference is term two minus term one, which in this case would be 18 minus 20, which is minus two. OK, so the D is going to be minus 2 
and they want the hundredth term. So we could say T100 is equal to A, which is our 20, plus 100 minus 1 multiplied by the common difference of negative 2. So that is going to be 20 plus 99 times minus 2. So let's pop that in our calculator. So that is going to be 20 plus bracket 99 delete multiplied by negative 2 close bracket equals minus 178 minus 178. So the hundredth term is going to be minus 178. Awesome. Now it says we want the n value if Sn is 80. Sn is 80. Okay, so now let's think about this. First of all, we know the term, the sum equation because it's given on the formula. S of n is equal to n over 2 bracket 2a plus n minus 1d. So do you agree we have a, it's 20, we have d, it's minus 2, we've got s of n, it's 80, so all we have to do is solve for n. Okay, so let's do that, it's going to be 80 is equal to n, which we're trying to find, over 2, times by 2 times 20 plus n minus 1 times by d which is minus 2. Okay so now what could we do? Let's multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of this denominator. So do you agree that 160 is equal to n 40, 2 times 20 is 40, minus 2 times n is minus 2n Minus times a minus is plus 2. Okay, so then what do we got? We've got, if we multiply this out, we've got 40n minus 2n squared plus 2n is still equal to 160. Okay, so now we need to add like terms and bring everything to the other side, one side. So let's first add like terms. So we've got 160 is equal to 42n minus 2n squared. So let's bring everything to the left hand side so that we've got a positive 2n squared. So we've got 2n squared minus 42n plus 160 is equal to zero. And I'm hoping you realize that now that we've got, basically we've got a trinomial. Okay, there's an n squared, an n and a number. So that is a trinomial. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna divide all of this by two. So you're left with n squared minus 21n plus 80 equals zero. Hmm. So let's see if we can factorize this so somehow we end up with a 21. Okay, so our factors of 80 are obviously going to be, uh, um, sure, okay, let's write them up here. 1 and 80, 2 and 40, 3 doesn't go, 4 and 20, 5 and, what is it, 5 and 16? Six fives of forty. No, that's not it. Let me just. Oh goodness, I can't believe I can't remember. Eighty divided by five. It is sixteen. Yeah, five and sixteen. Six doesn't work. Seven doesn't work. Um, so we're back up to eighty. So let's have a look. So it's one and eighty. That's not going to give us twenty-one. 2 and 40 is not going to give us 21. 4 and 20 is not going to give us 21. So it has to be 25 and 16. So this plus sign tells you that both the signs are the same and they're both a minus. So we've got n minus 5, n minus 16 equals 0. Therefore, n equals 5 or n equals 16. And you see here that it says is values 
okay, for n is if s of n is equal to 80, n is 5 or n is 16. So therefore, we've got our two solutions. If n is 5 or n is 16, the sum of these arithmetic series is going to be 80. Right, interesting here. Right, let, the reason for that, by the way, is because for the first um, bunch of numbers, they will be positive. It'll be 20, 18, 16, 14, 12, and then they start becoming negative. So after that, they will start subtracting again until you get to the 16th term, which is again equal to 80. All right, let's look at another question. Okay, so this looks a little bit more interesting. It says the sum of the first n terms of a series is given by the formula s of n is equal to 3n minus 1 plus 9. Okay, this says determine the sum of the first six terms of six terms. Okay, that's not too tricky. Okay, because they've given us the equation for the sum. And the sum formula is s of n is 3 to the n minus 1 plus 9. And what do they want? They want the sum of the first six terms. So all we got is sum of six is three to the six minus one plus nine, which is three to the five plus nine. And then all we need to do is pop that in our calculator. So let's go get our calculator. And we go three to the power of five equals plus nine equals, and that's 252. So that equals 252. Two. So the correct answer for this is 252. Now it says determine the first three terms of the sequence. Okay, so again, not too tricky because all that you need to do is substitute the values one, two, and three into this. To, okay, it's a little bit trickier than that. Okay, so we've got the sum of the first term. Do you agree the sum of the first term is just going to be the first term? So that's T1, which is going to be three to the one minus one plus nine. So 3 to the 1 minus 1 is 0. Anything to the 0 is 1. So 1 plus 9 equals 10. So the first term, T1, equals 10. The sum of the first two terms, okay, let's do it a different way. Let's do it like this. Erase. And let's do this like this way. Term 1, okay, oh, no. That's not going to help me at all, is it? That's worse. Oh, yeah. Ooh, what did I just do? Oh, yeah. So, term 1 is 10. The sum of the first term is 10. Now, let's do the sum of the second term. It's going to be 3 to 2 minus 1 plus 9. Okay? So do you agree that's 3 to the 1 plus 9, which is 12? So the sum of the first two terms is 12. Okay, the sum of the first two terms is 12. It's 3 squared, 2 minus 1 is 1, so it's 3 plus 9. So what is the second term? T2 can only be equal to 2. Okay, let's look at the third, some of the next three terms. So let's just erase the left hand side. Now we're looking at the sum of the first three terms. The sum of the first three terms. The sum of the first three terms is 3 to the 3 minus 1 plus 9. Okay, so that is going to be 3 squared plus 9 which is going to be 9 plus 9, which equals 18. So the sum of the first three terms is going to be 18. But what is the difference between the sum of 12 to 2 terms and the sum of 3 terms? T3 is going to be 6. So interesting enough, the first three terms of the sequence are 10, 2, and 6. Okay, very strange sequence, do you agree? Right, now let's look at this, okay? We have been given a sigma notation and it says to calculate the sum from n equals 3 to 10 of this 5 times by 2 to the minus n. Okay, now grade 12s, it doesn't matter what you think this is or what you think it looks like. You always, always, always need to find the first three terms so that you can determine if this is an arithmetic series, a geometric series, 
and that's it, okay, one of the two. Okay, so term one is going to have three in it, okay, the n is three, okay, so it's gonna be five multiplied by two to negative three, which is five over eight, okay, two cubed is eight. Term two, is going to be 5 multiplied by 2 to the negative 4, which is going to be 5 over 16. Okay. Term 3 is 5 multiplied by t to the negative 5, which is going to be 5 over 2 to the 5, which is 32. So do you agree my series reads like this? It's 5 over 8, 5 over 16, 5 over 32. Okay, do you agree? Where well, this would be 2 cubed, this is 2 to the 4, that's 2 to the 5, and the denominator minus, minus, minus. So do you agree my Tn would look like this, it would be 5 over, this is term 1, this is term 2, and this is term 3. Let's say that this was an a, a GP, let's say it's a GP, and my first term A was 5 over 8. Let's see if this thing's got a common ratio, let's work out if it's got a common ratio. So if it's got a common ratio, term 2 divided by term 1 would equal term 3 divided by term 2. So let's do that. Let's do term 2 divided by term 1. Okay. So term 2 divided by term 1 is going to be 5 over 16 divided by 5 over 8. So do you agree that would be the same as 5 over 16 times by 8 over 5? We cancel these and this becomes a half. So if I had a common ratio, my ratio would be a half. Let's try these two. Okay, T3 divided by T2 is going to be 5 over 32 divided by 5 over 16, which is 5 over 32 times by 16 over 5. And do you agree these cancel and these make a half? So yay, so we've got an R is a half. Okay, so this is definitely a geometric series where we've got A is my first term, which is five over eight. My common ratio is a half. Now we got the formula for S of N. S of N is A, R to the N minus one all over R minus one. That is the formula. Okay. So now we now need to work out how many terms. And guys, I know this is not a complicated thing, but well, some of you might not find it complicated, but some do. So the best way to do this, especially is to just show you the once and then hopefully you'll remember it. Okay, this is three and this is ten. So let's write it out. It's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now let's count the number of terms. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A lot of times my students will write ten minus three and get seven and then they will do the sum for seven terms. But in fact, this includes both the third term and the 10. So therefore it is eight terms. So please remember that. Now, if it's just this seven terms or eight terms in this case, it's pretty easy to just write it out like this and remember it. But if this was, for example, um, 643, you don't wanna be writing out three through to 643. So you need to remember, you can take these two and subtract them, but then you need to add one to include the outer number. So therefore we've got S and we're going for the ten to eight terms is equal to the first term, which is five over eight. The R is a half to the power of eight minus one over a half minus one. 
And then all we have to do is pop, so obviously this is minus a half, but we can pop this in our calculator. So let's do that. So we're going to clear, we're going to do a fraction, we're going to go and knock a fraction, and we're going to go 5 over 8 bracket um, fraction, there we go, 1 over 2 all to the power of 8 minus 1 close bracket and then we're going to go down and that's minus a half right so it's just minus a fraction of 1 over 2 equals and it becomes 1.245 so we're running off to two decimal places so it becomes 1.25 so that's 1 comma 25 there we go Hmm, okay, so the whole point about this was always write out at least your first three terms. So therefore you can see if it's an AP arithmetic sequence or a geometric sequence. And then always be careful with the actual number of terms that you're going to be solving for. Right, another question, okay. It says, for the series, k equals 1 to n, 22 minus 2k, determine the first three terms of the series. Okay, so they're making life easy for you by telling you to determine the first three terms. So the first three terms are going to be 22 minus 2, which is going to be 20. Then it's going to be, okay, let's just write it out. Okay, right. So term 2 would be 22 minus 2 times by 2, which is 22 minus 4, which is 18. Okay, T3 is 22 minus 2 times 3, which is 22 minus 6, which is, oh, sorry, which is 16. Okay, so that is 16. So the first three terms are 20, 18, and 16. So that definitely looks like a an arithmetic sequence, don't you agree? We'll be just going down by two every time. Now it says find the value of values of n if the sum from k equals one to n is 104. Okay, so now all we're looking for is the sum for n terms is equal to 104 and we want to know the n, okay? So, if you wanted to think of this, if you were worried, and I just told you what you do, subtract n minus 1 is going to be n minus 1, but then we add 1, so we go back to n terms. So it is correct that this is just equal to n terms, okay? Um, so now, s of n is equal to n over 2 bracket 2a plus n minus 1d. So the S of N is 104 is equal to N over 2, 2 times the first term, which is 20, plus N minus 1, and the D happens to be minus 2. Do you agree? From here to here, it's minus 2. From there to there, it's minus 2. So the D is minus 2. Right. So if we multiply this 2, we get 208 is equal to n, 2 times 20 is 40, n times minus 2 is minus 2n, minus times minus is plus 2, okay? So do you agree we get 208 <clears throat> is equal to 40n minus 2n squared plus 2n, so we take everything to the other side, we've got 2n squared minus 42n plus 208 is equal to zero. Really? Sorry, it just looks very similar to a question I just done. Um, let me just check this. This is 20, that's n minus one, that's minus two, right? Okay, so therefore we've got, yeah. Um, divide everything by two, we get n squared minus 21n plus 104 is equal to zero. Right, so now let's look for the factors of 104. 
Okay, so it's obviously 1 and 104, which is not going to work at all. We've got 2 and 52. Uh, 3 won't work. 4 and 4 goes into 10 twice. Remainder 2, that's 26. Um, 5 won't work. 6. 6 goes into 10, no, 7, 8, 8 goes into 10, that would work, 8, 8 goes into 10, once remained a 2, and then it's 13, and there you go, that's going to give us 21. So therefore we've got n minus 8, n minus 13 is equal to 0, therefore n is equal to 8 or n is equal to 13. There you go. Hmm, nice question. Right. Ah, so now we've got a geometric sequence. It says consider the following geometric sequence, 81p, 27p squared, 9p cubed, 3p to the 4. It says determine the common ratio of the sequence in terms of p. Okay, so that's pretty easy because as long as you know the common ratio is always t2 divided by t1 or t3 divided by t2 or any of those type of things, then you can get the common ratio. So we can call this term 1, this term 2, this term 3, this term 4, and let's just use term 2 divided by t1. So term 2 divided by t1 is going to be 27p squared over 81p. Okay, so do you agree that the p's cancel and you're only left with the p at the top? So the p's cancel and you're left with the p. Right, now let's divide both the top and the bottom by 9. If we do that, we've got 3 over 9. And then we can divide both the top and the bottom by 3 again and you get p over 3. So therefore, the common ratio is p over 3. Done. Now it says, for which values of p will the sequence converge? Okay, so this is theory that you need to know. And the theory states that a sequence, a geometric sequence will converge. In other words, it'll get closer and closer to a specific number if your ratio is between 1 and minus 1. Okay, between 1 and minus 1. So now what we need to do is we need to solve for p so that this works. So we're going to say, okay, fine, p over 3 has to be smaller than 1, but bigger than negative 1. So if we multiply both sides by 3 to get rid of it, we get minus 3 is smaller than p is smaller than 3. Okay, so therefore the values for p which, for which the sequence will converge is anything between 3 and negative 3. Finally, it says calculate the sum to infinity if p equals 2. Well, there will be to a sum to infinity if p equals 2 because it's between 3 and minus 3, right? So the formula for the sum to infinity, which you do find on your formula sheets, is a over 1 minus r. The first term is 81p, right? r is p over 3. Do you agree? Okay, p over 3. So now, do you, and it's 1 minus p over 3. But now what they've done is they've told us that p equals 2. So therefore, we can say the sum to infinity is equal to 81 multiplied by 2 over 1 minus 2 over 3, which is going to be 162 divided by a third, which is 162 multiplied by 3, which is 486. 486. The sum to infinity of p equals 2 is 486. There we go. Not too bad here. Right. Now, 
I like these questions. I like when they say the fourth term of something is this and this something is that. And then um, actually this is quite an easy question because they haven't even asked you about, usually they say the sum of the first two terms is equal to an arithmetic series and the sum of the first six and well, first term and third term is a geometric series. Blah, 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 blah. This is quite easy in the sense that they tell you that the fourth term of an arithmetic sequence is 34. And the 26th term is minus 32. So what are they telling us? They're telling us that T4 is equal to 34. Okay, but what does that mean? T4 is equal to A plus N minus 1D, but N is 4. So that's the same as saying A plus 3D. So A plus 3D is 34. And we can call that equation 1. Okay, we also have that the 26th term is minus 32. So therefore, T26 is going to be A plus um, 26 minus 1, which is 25D, but that is equal to minus 32. So we've got minus 32 is equal to A plus 25D, and that's equation 2. Okay, so this we already know from our first lot of information. It says show the common difference is minus 3. So now we have to solve for this and find D. So the best way to do this is to solve each of these for A. We're going to make A the subject of the formula. So I'm going to do that, but I'm going to do it just below it. So I'm going to go 34 minus 3D equals A. And I'm going to go minus 32 minus 25D is equal to A. So now both of these have got A as the subject of the formula. So therefore they can be equal. So I can go therefore 34 minus 3D is equal to minus 32 minus 25D. Okay. So if I take all the numbers that don't have a D and I take them to this side, I get 34 plus 32 is equal to in all the numbers with the letter on the other side we get minus 25 d plus 3d so this becomes 66 is equal to minus 22 d so do you agree i can divide both sides by minus 22 and what do you end up with? You go D is equal to minus 22 goes into 66. It has to be three times. Okay. So therefore, the common difference is minus three. Whoop, whoop. We found it out. Okay. Now, it says calculate the value of the 40th term. Okay. So let's think about what we have. Do we have A? No, we don't. Do we have D? Yes, we do. So they want T of 40, which is going to be equal to A plus 39 times by minus 3. But we need to get A. So we need to use either this equation here or we have to use this equation here to find out what A is. Um, I'm going to use this one simply because it's got a 3D compared to 25D in it. So let's use that. So I'm going to go 34 minus 3D equals A. We've used, proved it here. But D is minus 3. So we've got 34 minus 3 times minus 3 is equal to A. So it's 34 plus 9 is equal to A. So 43 equals A. Okay, so now we know that T40 is going to equal 43 plus 39 times by minus 3. Okay, so now we can pop that in our calculator after I've erased all this for space. Okay, I'm just going to erase all of this. Okay, so let's change. Oh, sorry, now I want it back there. Now I just want to change color. Okay, so what is that? Let's use our calculators. So we're going to go 43 
minus bracket 3 times 39. And if you're wondering why minus does, it's because minus times a plus is a minus. So I'm going to close bracket equals, and that's minus 74. So the value of the 40th term is minus 74. Right, then it says calculate the sum of the series to 200 terms. Okay, so again, S200 is equal to 200 over 2 bracket. 2 times A, which is 43, plus N, which is 200 minus 1, so that's 199. D is minus 3. There we go. So that's going to be 100 times by 2 times 43, plus, no, minus 3 times 199. Close brackets, so we need a calculator. And we're going to go, what's that, 86? 86 minus bracket 3 times 199, close bracket, equals, multiplied by 100, equals minus 51,100, equals minus 51,100. There you go. Excellent. Right. Now it says calculate the value of this. And I'm actually looking for a Just a second, we can go back to these. There we go. I like this one. Okay, we'll go back to those. I just want to do at least one um, quadratic sequence with you in today's lesson. Okay, it says the number pattern 80, 8, 20, 38, 62 is such that the sequence of second difference is constant. So this is a quadratic sequence. The first thing it says, write down the fifth term of the number pattern, and then it says, determine a simplified algebraic expression for the nth term of the number pattern. Okay, so let's do it. We've got 8, 20, 38, 62. Okay, from 8 to 20, do you agree it's 12? From 20 to 38 is 18. <sighs> Sorry, I get very irritated when that happens. 18. From 38 to 62, if we can't do it in our heads, we can go 62 minus 38 equals 24. Right, so do you agree the difference from here to here is 6? The difference from there to there is 6? Okay, so if we wanted to find this next number, we'd go 6 plus 24, which is 30. And then we'd add 30 to 62 and we'd end up with 92. So the first thing, the next number is 92. Now it says the term of the simplified algebra expression for the nth term. Okay, so tn equals an squared plus bn plus c. Okay, where this is 2a, this is 3a plus b. And this is a plus b plus c. Okay, so let's start at the bottom. We know that 2a equals 6, therefore a equals 3. Awesome. Now we're going to substitute that into this bit here. And we're going to change color so that you can see what I'm doing. So I've got 3a plus b equals 12. That's because of this. Okay. So therefore, we've got 3 times 3 plus b equals 12. 3 times 3 is 9. Do you agree? So we've got 9 plus b equals 12. Therefore, b is equal to 3. Okay, grade 12, so we've run out of time. So if you want to for tomorrow, you're welcome to try and finish the sum. Otherwise, we will continue with it in tomorrow's lesson. Have a great day.